ओके इन आर वीडियो सीरीज ऑफ रूमोटोलॉजी लेक्चर्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सिस्टेमिक लूपस एरेथमेटोस एस एस एल ई अ ट्वेंटी एट ईयर ओल्ड लेडी कम्स टू योर क्लिनिक एंड टेल्स यू दैट डॉक्टर फॉर द लास्ट फ्यू मंथ्स आई हैव बीन हैविंग दिस माइल्ड फीवर फटीग एंड सवेयर जॉइंट पेन फॉर द लास्ट फ्यू मंथ्स आई हैम गेटिंग रिकरेंट पेनलेस माउथ अल्सर फॉर द लास्ट फ्यू मंथ्स आई एम हैविंग हेयर फॉल एलोपीसिया whenever i get out in sunlight whenever i am exposed to sunlight i get burning sensation over my face on my hands whenever my hands are exposed to cold water they change their color they turn blue and that is a very painful condition raynaud's phenomena this is a classical presentation of systemic lupus erythematosus A famous personality who suffered from SLE was Selena Gomez. She suffered to an extent that she had to get a kidney transplant. Now we'll discuss the presentation, the diagnosis and treatment of SLE in detail. SLE is an autoimmune condition in which the immune system attacks its own tissues. It's an autoimmune condition in which the immune system damages and attacks the own body. and it causes widespread inflammation tissue damage in the affected organs remember sle is a systemic disease it affects each and every organ in the body the word lupus comes from wolf due to wolf like appearance the rashes appear as if someone has been bit by a wolf it affects females much more than males the ratio is 10 times more in females as compared to males Now coming to the etiology of SLE in the etiology of SLE there are two main factors genetic factors and environmental factors both of these factors play a role in causing the disease the main factors are genetic factors the main involvement is from the genetic factors HLA DR2 HLA DR3 is associated with uh, SLE genetic deficiency of complement proteins can cause SLE now if this person who has these genetic deficiencies or problems get exposed to the environmental triggers the environmental triggers include ultraviolet light smoking silica epstein barr virus now these environmental factors will trigger these genes and they will result in SLE other than that hormonal factors hyperestrogenic states are associated with causing SLE therefore it is more common in females drugs including procainamide hydralazine these can cause drug induced sle now how does this happen now let's say we have a person who has genetic predisposition to sle that person gets exposed to environmental factor like ultraviolet radiation and ultraviolet radiation damages the cell of a person and that cell gets damaged and nuclear material the nucleus histone proteins and dna gets exposed when the dna histone proteins and the nuclear material gets exposed to the immune system immune system produces antibodies against the very own dna histone proteins and nuclear material so the immune system is attacking its own cells the component of its own cells are being damaged by the antibodies produced against them that is the pathophysiology in systemic lupus erythematosus so it is an autoimmune condition in which type 3 hypersensitivity reaction takes place in which antibodies are formed against the antigens of the body so antigen antibody complexes are formed those antigen antibody complexes further activate the complement system of immune system and that complement system further damages the cells further damages the organs of the body and results in inflammation so that is the pathophysiology behind sle if you understand the pathophysiology you can easily understand the diagnosis you can easily understand the treatment of sle in the etiology i mentioned that complement deficiency can cause sle how complement deficiency can cause sle basically when antibodies are formed against the antigens and antibody antigen complexes are formed these antigen antibody complexes are to be cleared away by macrophages complement basically invites these macrophages when there is complement deficiency and those macrophages are not activated and those macrophages do not eat away these antigen antibody complexes these antigen antibody complexes are lying in the body and they further activate the immune system there is activation of 
immune system and that immune system further damages the body. So macrophages are activated by complement and those macrophages eat away these antigen antibody complexes. When there is complement deficiency, the macrophages cannot clear away these antigen antibody complexes and immune system is triggered, over triggered and that immune system damages the body. That is autoantibody development due to complement deficiency. So whenever there is complement deficiency, the antigen antibody complexes are not cleared away. When they, these complexes are not cleared away, these antigen antibody complexes further invite the immune system and that immune system damages the body and organs of the person. Now coming to the clinical presentation of SLE. In the clinical presentation of SLE, remember SLE is a chronic disease in which the patient always has a baseline disease. And in that baseline disease, patient can sometimes get exacerbation of the condition that are called as flares. So the patient has phases of remission and relapse and most common presentation of SLE is constitutional symptoms like fever, fatigue, weight loss and joint pain. Joints are involved in more than 90% of the cases arthritis, arthralgias and that is a most common initial presentation, a vague presentation which is difficult to diagnose. But when the skin manifestations appear in 85% of the cases, the diagnosis can become a bit easier. In the skin manifestations, patients develop malar rash or butterfly rash, rash present over the cheekbones and it appears like the wings of a butterfly. And remember, this, this malar rash or butterfly rash spares the nasolabial fold. This is a very classical point of malar rash that it does not involve, it spares the nasolabial folds. This is a picture showing uh, butterfly rash and look this is these are the wings of the butterfly and look the nasolabial folds have been spared the nasolabial folds are not affected then in patients with SLE you may be able to appreciate Raynaud's phenomena what happens in Raynaud's phenomena the patient will tell you that doctor whenever my hands are exposed to cold water or cold air my hands change their color they initially become pale or white and then they become blue and blue or purplish and it is associated with severe pain basically what happens is that vessels are vasoconstricted that result in the uh, fingers to become white and that causes severe pain and deoxygenation and hypoxia of the fingers and then the uh, blood is deoxygenated and that uh, blood appears purple or blue on the skin that is called as Raynaud's phenomena this is a picture showing the discoloration of the hands Remember, these patients can have discoid rash. Discoid rash is a scarring rash that leaves a scar that deforms the skin. Remember, malar rash is not a scarring rash. The rash present on the cheekbones it does not leave a scar. But the discoid rash leaves a scar. It is a deforming rash. Look at a picture of discoid rash that leaves a scar. These patients will tell you that they are having recurrent oral ulcers. Usually we get oral ulcers and these oral ulcers are very painful. But these patients get recurrent ulcers. But the good thing is that these patients have painless oral ulcers. These ulcers are always there sometimes in one part of the mouth, sometimes in another part of the mouth. But these ulcers are painless. Alopecia, there is hair loss and it, the alopecia in uh, uh, SLE is non-scarring. The only thing that leaves a scar is the discoid rash. Miller rash alopecia does not leave a scar. This is a picture showing non-scarring alopecia. These patients develop periangal telangiectasias. Periangal telangiectasias are basically the dilation of capillaries near the nail bed. Periangal near the nail bed, telangiectasia, dilation of the capillaries, periangal telangiectasia. This is a picture showing dilation of the capillaries, the telangiectasia near the nail bed. An important point to remember is that both SLE and rheumatoid arthritis damage the joints and joints are involved in both SLE and rheumatoid arthritis. But rheumatoid arthritis causes severe damage to the joints, it causes deformation of the joints, it causes deformity of the joints. But SLE does not lead to deformity, it causes inflammation of the joints but it does not lead to severe deformity. So rheumatoid arthritis and SLE both affect metacarpophalangeal joint and proximal interphalangeal joint but SLE does not lead to deformity while rheumatoid arthritis leads to deformity. 
Now, another important point to remember is that if a person is suffering from one autoimmune condition in rheumatology, that person usually is having another autoimmune condition associated with it. Now, these patients of SLE usually have uh, uh, antiphospholipid syndrome associated with it. Usually, these patients with SLE will have rheumatoid arthritis associated with it. Patients with SLE usually have Sjogren syndrome associated with it. So, autoimmune conditions are usually uh, found together. If a person is suffering from one autoimmune condition, that person usually has another autoimmune condition associated with it as well. If you find rheumatoid arthritis with SLE, that is called as rupus. Now, SLE is a systemic disease. It affects each and every organ of the body. Each and every part of the body, each and every system of the body is affected by SLE. Antibodies are formed against blood. The RBCs, anti-erythrocyte antibodies, anti-erythropoietin antibodies, anti-erythropoietin receptor antibodies. And these cause hematological manifestations that, are, that results in cytopenia. All the cell lines are down. Platelets are down. RBCs are down. Even WBCs are down, leukopenia, anemia, thrombocytopenias are seen in SLE. SLE also causes inflammation of the membrane surrounding the organs. Pleura surrounding the lungs are affected that results in pleuritis. And when the membrane surrounding the heart is affected that is called as pericarditis. SLE damages the kidneys, it affects the kidneys and it results in nephritis. It was the kidneys that were affected in the case of Selena Gomez that she had to get a, a kidney transplant in active lupus kidneys, one of the very important target of SLE. And it is one of the common cause of death in patients with SLE due to the renal failure. SLE also affects the heart. It causes pericarditis, myocarditis, endocarditis. Now remember in our infective endocarditis video, we, we studied that infection affects the endocardium resulting in infective endocarditis. But in SLE, there is no infection. But still there is inflammation of the endocardium resulting in endocarditis. That is called as Libman sac endocarditis. In Libman sac endocarditis, basically there is fibrin deposition. Fibrin deposition beneath these valves. And when there is fibrin deposition beneath these walls, the cordae tendini are damaged. When the cordae tendini are damaged, there is a regurge of the valve. So, endocarditis, Libman sac endocarditis causes regurge of the valves. Coronary artery disease after the age of 45, these SLE patients develop accelerated atherosclerosis. Therefore, in the diagnosis and management, we will study that we have to assess these patients as well because there is increased risk of coronary artery disease. SLE also affects the lungs. It causes shrinking lung syndrome. It causes fibrosis of the lung, interstitial lung disease. It also makes the capillaries stiff that results in pulmonary hypertension. It also affects the vessels, causes vasculitis. That is a cause of pulmonary hypertension. It causes hypercoagulable state. That hypercoagulable state results in clot formation. That is called as antiphospholipid syndrome. What is antiphospholipid syndrome? We'll discuss that in another video. But for now, remember, it causes excessive hypercoagulable state. That hypercoagulable state is called as antiphospholipid syndrome that causes clot formation. It also affects the neurons, it causes seizures, psychosis, basically antibodies are formed against the neurons, anti-neuronal antibodies, anti-glutamate antibodies, psychosis, psychosis is caused by anti-ribosomal antibodies. So these are all antibodies that damage the nervous system as well that results in lupus cerebritis that is called as lupus cerebritis in which patients will have a headache, patients will have cerebral edema, patients can even have coma in lupus cerebritis. They also affect the eyes resulting in keratoconjunctivitis cica, the dry eyes. A simple mnemonic to remember all these is SOAP Brain MD. S for serocytis, pleuritis, pericarditis, O for oral ulcers, A for arthritis, P for photosensitivity, B for blood, the blood involvement, autoimmune hemolytic anemias, anemia of chronic disease, R for renal involvement, a for ANA, anti-nuclear antibodies, I for immunologic phenomena, N for neurologic involvement, M for Miller rash, D for discoid rash seen in SLE. Now coming to the diagnosis of SLE. Remember SLE diagnosis is a clinical diagnosis. 
but you support their clinical diagnosis with a few tests. What are those tests that you perform in SLE? The first test is anti-nuclear antibody test. Remember that anti-nuclear antibody test is the first test. It is positive in many other autoimmune conditions, but it is the first test because it is a very sensitive test. And if this test is positive, it means that you are going in the right direction. The possibility of SLE or any autoimmune disease is very high if the anti-nuclear antibody test is positive. If it is positive, you it gives you a go ahead that you should investigate this patient because there is some autoimmune condition, most likely SLE in this patient. But if this test is negative, then it rules out many autoimmune conditions. So anti-nuclear antibody test is the first test that you perform and it is 98% sensitive. Now the positive titers of greater than or equal to 1 ratio 80 are considered to be a positive test. Now, what does 1 ratio 80 mean? 1 ratio 80 means that if you take a sample from a person and you dilute that sample 80 times, even after 80 times, you can still detect antibodies in that solution. That is called as 1 ratio 80. It means that the antibodies are present and even if you dilute the solution 80 times, still the antibodies are positive. That is a positive ANA titer. And if the ANA is positive, you order the further test for this patient because most likely an autoimmune condition is there. ANA is not specific for SLE, but it is a sensitive test for autoimmune conditions. You Then if the test is positive, you order the specific ANA, the specific tests for SLE and those tests are anti-DSDNA, anti-Smith. Anti-Smith is the most specific test and if anti-Smith or anti-DSDNA anti is positive, it means that SLE is there. And if ANA anti-nuclear antibody is negative, it means that there is most likely there is no underlying autoimmune condition. You should, uh, you should consider other alternate diagnosis. And remember, anti-DSDNA antibody titers correlate with the lupus activity. It shows the progression of lupus. If there is persistent elevation in anti-DSDNA levels of a patient, it means that that patient will now get exacerbation of uh, SLE because persistently elevated DSDNA level indicate that that patient is at high risk of getting flares of the disease in getting high risk at getting exacerbations of the disease. So it correlates with the disease activity. And remember, it specifically co correlates with lupus nephritic activity the effect of lupus on kidney if the DSDNA levels are high it indicates that the kidneys are at a high risk of getting affected by lupus then the other specific test for lupus is anti-Smith antibodies anti-Smith antibodies are basically against a specific histone protein present in the nucleus of the cell so anti-Smith antibodies are present positive in 30% of the patients but if this anti-Smith antibody is positive it indicates that that patient has SLE because it is even more specific that, than anti-DSDNA. Anti-Smith antibody is the most specific antibody for SLE. Since it is positive in fewer patients we prefer to do ANA first because ANA is sensitive it is more positive in 98% people. If that is positive, most likely autoimmune condition is there. If ANA is positive, after that we go for anti-DSDNA and anti-Smith antibodies. And if anti-DSDNA or if anti-Smith antibodies are positive, this is highly indicative that that patient has SLE. Other tests that you need to perform are the antiphospholipid antibodies. As I said that autoimmune conditions have an overlap. If one autoimmune condition is there, usually that patient has other autoimmune conditions and there is strong correlation of SLE with antiphospholipid syndrome. We will discuss about antiphospholipid syndrome in a separate video. But for now, remember that antiphospholipid syndrome is a syndrome in which there is hypercoagulability of blood in which there is increased chances of clot formation in blood and antiphospholipid syndrome has certain antibodies that cause it and those antibodies are anti-cardiolipin antibodies, anti-beta-2 glycoprotein antibodies. 
So these are the antiphospholipid antibodies. Remember the classical scenario of antiphospholipid syndrome would be that a female, a female has recurrent abortion. The pregnancy was going fine, but all of a sudden that patient gets abortion, death of the infant. That is due to thrombosis of the uterine vessels. Thrombosis of uterine vessels occur due to these anti-cardiolipin, anti-beta-2 glycoprotein antibodies. And remember, complement levels are low in SLA since it's a type 3 autoimmune reaction in which there is excessive activation of complement and complements get complement uh, proteins get used up in the reaction and the complement levels are low. C3, C4 levels are low and they are used to monitor response to the treatment. ESR and CRP levels will also be elevated because it's an inflammatory condition and these are the inflammatory markers that get elevated when there is inflammation in the body. CBC will show cytopenias. Remember, as I said, that there are anti-erythrocyte antibodies, anti-platelet antibodies. These antibodies will destroy all cell lines, cytopenia, thrombocytopenia, uh, uh, anemia, leukopenia, all the cell lines will be down. And remember, as I said, that it's an autoimmune condition that affects each and every organ of the body. It affects the kidneys. In the flares, kidneys are the main target of SLE and kidneys uh, get damaged in SLE. And if you do urinalysis in which you see proteinuria, hematuria, that glomerulus has been damaged and everything is coming out from the glomerulus and that that filter is now damaged and that filter cannot hold the things, but it cannot hold the protein and uh, blood within the blood. Everything starts coming out. You will see hematuria, you will see proteinuria and if you see proteinuria on urinalysis, the next step is that you calculate how much protein is coming out. You do a request 24 hour urine collection or you do spot urine protein to creatinine ratio. You calculate that how much protein is coming out from the kidneys. And for lupus nephritis, remember the most specific test to see the effect of lupus on kidneys is biopsy. Kidney biopsy is the most specific test for lupus nephritis. An important point to remember is if someone asks you that which test is falsely positive in SLE, the tests of syphilis are falsely positive in SLE. The patient will not be having any symptoms of SLE and if you perform uh, RPR VDRL in these patients, the RPR VDRL tests of syphilis are positive. Why are they positive? They are positive because in RPR VDRL, as we discussed in our syphilis video, that the, in RPR VDRL we detect antibodies and the antibodies against syphilis are similar to the antibodies in, found in SLE. So, uh, you detect, so the test detects antibodies of syphilis and it considers, it thinks that these are the antibodies against the syphilis, the, against the treponema pallidum. So, RPR and VDRL are falsely positive in SLE. Patient is not having syphilis, but the tests of syphilis are positive. Now, there is a latest criteria for the diagnosis of SLE 2019 ULAR ACR criteria, a scoring criteria for SLE. In that scoring criteria, we have divided into two domains. The first domain is the clinical domain. The second one is the immunologic domain. You score each and every point in it. In the clinical domain, we have constitutional symptoms like fever, it gets two points. Cutaneous domain has all the cutaneous symptoms, alopecias, oral ulcers, discoid lupus, and you give scores accordingly. Arthritis domain, neurologic domain, serocytous symptoms, and scores appropriately. In hematologic domains, you have the symptoms, renal domain. So this is all the clinical domain. In immunologic domains, you have all the antibody tests. The antibodies that you that we perform, antiphospholipid domain has all the tests of antibodies, anti-cardiolipin antibodies, anti-beta-2 glycoprotein or lupus anticoagulant. If any one of these is positive, patient gets two points for this. Complement level, low C3, low C4 gets three points. Highly specific antibody domain, anti-DSDNA antibody, anti-Smith antibodies. If each one of these is positive, it gets six points. No, remember. When you are calculating the score, if within one domain, let's say if we take the domain of a neurologic domain and in that neurologic domain, if the patient is having seizures, if the patient is also having psychosis and the patient is also having delirium, you do not need to add up all the scores of this one single neurologic domain. What you do is that you take the maximum score out of it. Only the maximum score will be taken. 
लाइक यू यू विल नॉट स्कोर इट एज टेन फाइव प्लस थ्री प्लस टू टेन नो यू विल नॉट स्कोर इट लाइक दैट यू विल जस्ट टेक द फाइव आउट ऑफ दिस वन डोमेन the same way if the patient is having findings of hematologic domain if the patient is having leukopenia thrombocytopenia and autoimmune hemolysis and uh, all these things are positive you do not give 4 plus 4 plus 3 11 you do not give it 11 score you give the maximum score you give the score 4 so uh, the maximum number which is present in a domain can be given you cannot score it more than that so you add up the total points and the total points if they are greater than or equal to 10 it is classified as sle and an important thing to remember is that all these patients must have an ana level of greater than 1 ratio 80 as an entry criteria for this if ana levels are low this criteria cannot be applied and remember sle classification requires points from at least one clinical domain at least one clinical domain must be positive for the diagnosis of sle previously there was no scoring criteria in it previously it was just just the same the clinical domain and immunologic domains and in these domains you need to have at least four positive domains and at least one from the clinical domain and one from the immunologic domains that was the previous uh, classification but now we have this scoring criteria in which you give scores accordingly in which the maximum score that you can give is the maximum number present in the domain and if it is greater than or equal to 10 that points out toward sle remember these sle patient gets accelerated atherosclerosis these patients must get cardiovascular disease risk assessment because cardiovascular disease is one of the common causes of death in sle patient now you will be thinking that i have i have said about uh, 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 kidney disease as a common cause of death i have talked about coronary artery disease as a common cause of death now what is the common cause of death in these patient basically it depends upon the age of the patient if a person is newly diagnosed case of sle and that patient is uh, getting flares of sle in the young age and in the young age if the get, patient is getting flares of sle during that flares you will be bombarding that patient with steroids because we will study now that steroids is the treatment of the flares of sle you will be bombarding that patient with steroids and whenever you give steroids to the patient you immunocompromise the patient and when you immunocompromise the patient there is increased chances that that patient will now get infections so if a, if a person is a newly diagnosed young patient of sle that newly diagnosed young patient of sle will get flares and those flares will be treated with steroids and that steroid will cause uh, immunocompromised state and that will result in infection and in early years infection is a common cause of death in this patient if the patient is having active rapidly progressive sle renal failure is also a very common cause as i said uh, uh, in the case of selena gomez she had to get a renal transplant because in such a young age there was so much progression of the disease that it totally damaged the kidneys so renal failure is also an important cause in young patients with active lupus and after the age of 45 years if the patient reaches the age of 45 years after 45 years there is increased atherosclerosis increase the atherosclerosis causes coronary artery disease after the age of 45 years coronary artery disease is a common cause of death in these patients so it depends upon the age of the patient it also depends upon the clinical status of sle and which organs the sle is affecting so these are the common causes of mortality in these patients now coming to neonatal lupus in neonatal lupus remember there are anti ro and anti la antibodies anti ro and anti la antibodies are the antibodies that are igg antibodies that are positive in sle now as as we know that igg antibody can cross placenta if the anti ro and anti la antibodies are positive these antibodies will cross placenta and if these antibodies cross placenta the main target of these antibodies is av node of the infant the newborn that is present in the uterus they attack the heart of the patient when they attack the heart of the newborn they will attack the av node and if the av node is damaged it will result in complete heart block so the neonatal lupus affects 
the AV node, it destroys the AV node and it causes congenital heart block and most of these infants die because of the heart block before even you make the diagnosis of heart block or before even you make uh, put pacemaker in these patients most of these infants expire and if the infant makes it then uh, you need to put pacemaker in such patients now with this i'll also like to discuss drug induced lupus in drug induced lupus remember the mnemonic ship sulfur drugs h for hydralazine i for isoniazid p for pyrazinamide and these drugs if a, sometimes if a person takes it if the patient takes it and patient develops rashes just as the rash of sle and if you do antihistone antibody in this patient the antihistone antibodies will be positive why is this antibody positive because as i said in the etiology that certain types of drugs can also predispose the patient to developing sle but remember that drug induced sle is not severe drug induced sle is for the short period of time till the patient is taking that drug and it only has cutaneous manifestations it does not cause lupus nephritis or pleuritis or it does not affects the brain it does not affect the vital organs it only has cutaneous manifestations and it's it it stops as soon as you stop the drug so that is drug induced sle caused by antihistone antibodies and the drugs i mentioned now coming to the treatment of sle in the treatment of sle there are two main things the patient has a persistent disease that is to be controlled by maintenance therapy and then there are flares of the disease exacerbations of the disease that are to be managed with steroids so that is the treatment of sle in the treatment of sle there are certain general measures that you have to take you ask the patient to avoid the triggers you ask the patient to avoid ultraviolet light cover the skin uh, place sunblock with spf of greater than or equal to 50 it it shows the strength of the sunblock and patient should quit smoking and patient should do mild aerobic exercise and with that an important thing to remember is that you must admit the patient of sle if the diagnosed patient of sle has unexplained fever if the patient has severe disease damage to the kidneys lupus nephritis alveolar hemorrhage with hemoptysis neuropsychiatric sle patient is now in comatose state or patient is now having seizures sepsis or thrombosis because these are these features are associated with increased mortality in patients with sle now when you when you have a patient of sle with you or you have a newly diagnosed patient of sle you you divide the patient into mild moderate severe category in the mild category are the patients in which no vital organs are affected patient just has the constitutional symptoms of fever fatigue weight loss and joint pain rash and arthritis the vital organs are not yet affected and patient has cytopenias in which you see the platelet count and the platelet count is between 50 to 1000 uh, k that is a mild case of sle in which no vital organ is affected on the other hand in severe case the uh, sle targets the main organ the vital organs like it causes nephritis it causes myelitis pneumonitis mesenteric vasculitis severe cytopenias now in such patients this is a severe form of sle in the moderate form in moderate form also these vital organs are not affected to an extent that they cause severe disease but they are mildly affected they are also mildly affected in moderate disease they cause vasculitis serocytis rheumatoid arthritis like arthritis cytopenias in which the platelet count is between 20 to 50 thousand so you, if a patient comes to you with sle you have diagnosed a patient with sle you divide the patient into mild moderate severe and accordingly you give the treatment now remember in all patients of sle the main drug the most important drug is hydroxychloroquine hydroxychloroquine is the main drug of sle hydroxychloroquine is cornerstone therapy of sle hydroxychloroquine modulates the immune system and protects the body from the immune system attack it provides a maintenance control of sle and it reduces the frequency of flares and it also re reduces the frequency of complications of sle so hydroxychloroquine remember hydroxychloroquine is the main drug 
and if the patient is having mild condition you give hydroxychloroquine 300 to 400 mg per orally once daily and if the patient comes to you and patient has moderate disease in which there is somewhat damage to the vital organs but it has not affected the vital organs to a severe extent you give hydroxychloroquine and with that hydroxychloroquine you also give oral glucocorticoids to suppress the immune response and oral glucocorticoids are given with hydroxychloroquine they augment the therapy and they stop the immune response from attacking the own body now the oral glucocorticoids prednisone is given less than or equal to 0.5 mg per kg per orally once daily and you gradually taper the dose to a maintenance dose of less than 7.5 mg per orally once daily so in moderate disease you give hydroxychloroquine with oral glucocorticoids and in some patients sometimes you also need to add immunosuppressive agents immunosuppressive agents like mycophenolate Cyclophosphamide. These are immunosuppressive agents that are given for the maintenance therapy. They control the immune system and protect the body from the immune attack. So, immunosuppressive agents like mycophenolate and cyclophosphamides can also be used in some patients within the moderate category. In severe patients, if the patient comes to you with severe vital organ damage, the first thing that you need to give is that you have to bombard that patient with steroids. You have to give high dose IV steroids so that you control the immune, you uh, control the immune response and protect the body from the damage that is being done from the immune system. You give induction therapy with high dose IV steroids, and then when you have controlled the disease with high dose IV steroids, you you give the maintenance therapy with hydroxychloroquine with oral steroids and immunosuppressants. So a combination of these is used to control the disease at the baseline to provide a maintenance control so in severe cases you first of all control the flare with iv steroids high dose iv steroids and when you have controlled the flare then you give the maintenance therapy with hydroxychloroquine and oral steroids with or without immunosuppressants for the induction to control the flare of the disease, you give IV steroids, methylprednisolone 250 to 1000 mg IV once daily for 3 days and then you shift the patient to oral prednisone. Immunosuppressive agents include methotrexate, hydroxychloroquine but hydroxychloroquine is remember is the main drug. Methotrexate was the main drug for rheumatoid arthritis. In SLE, the main drug is hydroxychloroquine. Biologic agents are also there. These are monoclonal antibodies. Basically, monoclonal antibodies are the antibodies against the antibodies. The antibodies that are damaging the human body, the damaging the human organs, you give antibodies that bind these antibodies and remove these bodies away from the circulation. Belimumab, Enifrolumab, Rituximab. These are the antibodies, biologic agents, antibodies against the antibodies that are damaging the body. Now remember before starting any immunosuppressants or steroids, remember always rule out latent TB. Because if you are giving immunosuppressant, if you are suppressing the immune system, you can reactivate TB in some patients. You monitor the patient whenever you are giving hydroxychloroquine. Remember hydroxychloroquine, it deposits in the retina. It affects the eyesight. So you request eye screening after 5 years and then yearly in patients taking chronic hydroxychloroquine. Now coming to lupus nephritis, as I said, it affects uh, lupus affects the kidneys. To control lupus nephritis, you give IV glucocorticoids, methylprednisone, and with that you give immunosuppressants like mycophenolate and cyclophosphamide. So a combination of steroid and immunosuppressant is used for the control of lupus nephritis. Before going into the summary, if you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button. We talked about what is SLE, the etiology of SLE, the pathophysiology the presentation, skin presentation, the manifestations of him, uh, different systems, lungs, vascular, neurologic symptoms, ophthalmologic symptoms, mnemonic to remember the manifestations of SLE, the diagnosis with ANA as a screening test and specific tests, DSDNA and anti-Smith antibodies, other tests, urinalysis, RPR, VDRL, falsely positive, risk assessment of the patient, in the treatment, the general measures, Admit the patient if the patient has these, divide the patient into mild, moderate, severe categories and you give hydroxychloroquine to each patient and with that you either combine oral cort uh, glucocorticoids and if the patient has flares, you straight away give uh, high dose IV steroids. 
immunosuppressive agents and biologic agents before starting immunosuppressive therapy and steroids rule out TB. Monitoring of a patient if taking hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of lupus nephritis to give steroids with immunosuppressive drugs. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on rheumatology lectures. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.